right, so uh, we're gonna do some really quick review over uh, anatomy of the heart. Um, and this will kind of, this will be up um, on Google Classrooms for you guys so that you can go back and look at it if you want to, if you need review. Um, I didn't want to take class time to do this um, just because it would take a while and some of y'all have been through my other classes, you've seen this before. So I didn't want it to be too boring for the rest of you guys. Um, but those who did need it, um, I wanted to go through it with you guys. Uh, so looking at the heart um, can be kind of complicated, um, but it's really not as bad as it seems when you break it down into something more simple. So I always like to show the heart as a box like this um, with our four chambers in it because it's easier to understand than um, the heart itself if you look at, say, like the model or um, like pictures online or anything like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go quick. I'm just going to be like naming the um, the sections of the heart, major blood vessels. We'll go through layers and things like that. Okay. So again, this is the heart set up like this. Um, and um, I'll go ahead and, like I said, label label everything. Okay. So when we look at a when we look at a person's heart, we're always going to talk about their heart versus our heart. So the left and right becomes opposite to us. So because you know, I have my left and right, but because I'm referring to this heart, it becomes um, opposite to me. So this over here would be um, the left side of the heart. So I'm just going to put a little L, and then this will be the right side of the heart over here, so I'm going to put an R, just so we don't get confused. Okay, our top, so I like to think about the, ha uh, the heart as like a house. So if this is the house and we've got rooms within the house, then each of these rooms are going to be called chambers. Okay, so we need to label our chambers. So we already have right and left. So now we need names for the tops and the bottoms. Okay, so the tops of the heart is always referred to as the atria or atrium. Um, kind of depends on if it's plural or singular. So if it's if you're just talking about one, like the right atrium, then it's U-M, but if you're talking about them together, then it's the atria, okay? And then the bottom part of the heart is known as the ventricle, and you can call them ventricles, okay? So there is, please do not refer to the chambers as the lower right ventricle. It just, it's, it's redundant, because you're already saying that it's the right, and it's it's already the bottom because you're calling it a ventricle. It's, it's the bottom of the heart. Okay, so there's no reason to say lower or upper because this part of the name already tells you if it's up or down. Okay, so again, the tops of the heart is called the atria or the atrium, and then the bottom is the ventricles. Okay, um, so uh, the atrium are always going to be responsible for receiving blood whereas the ventricles are always going to be responsible for pumping blood, okay? So with the right side of the heart, or the right atrium and the left atrium, they're both going to be receiving blood. So the first thing we want to talk about is the, the major blood vessels that are coming in. Um, so these are the blood vessels that are coming back from the rest of the body, going into the heart that is going to about to be oxygenated to get pumped back out, okay? So we have two major blood vessels. We have... Um, one up here, and again, it, it does not have oxygen, so um, we're going to label it as B because it doesn't have that oxygen. I'm not sure how well you can see the color. Sorry. It is a little darker. Anyways, um, so we're going to name this guy, and so we have a top and bottom version, so it's technically the same blood vessel, but we're going to give it a different name based on because one is on the top and one is on the bottom. So um, we're going to call this one superior because it's on top. And he is called the vena cava. Okay. And because this guy's on bottom, he's inferior. And he is also a vena cava. Okay. So this is the main major blood vessels that are coming back to the heart. And again, everything always comes back to an atrium. So we'll see later when we look at blood flow. This guy is actually going to dump blood into this chamber up here, okay? And this chamber is the right atrium, okay? So um, we've got that major blood vessel. Um, we have got 
uh, another major blood vessel that's going to come out the side um, over here, out the sides this direction. Okay, so at this point, when we, like I said, when we go over blood flow, it'll kind of make a little bit more sense. But just going over naming stuff, these guys right here are going to be called the pulmonary um, arteries. My full script didn't run out. Okay, good. Sorry. Just making sure that you can see everything here. Um, so that's going to be a pulmonary artery. And then um, coming back from the lungs, because then we're going to have oxygen. Um, let me grab a new red marker. Sorry, this one sucks. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm not doing it bigger. There you go. Anywho, um, so now I'm going to switch to red just because, like I said, when we look at blood flow, you'll see why it's red. So he's still going to be pulmonary just because he is coming from the lungs. But again, pulmonary, I mean, arteries and veins are named for the directions that they're flowing. Uh, when we go over arteries and veins, you'll kind of understand that. And this is the only place in the entire body where the artery will be blue and the vein will be red. Everywhere else it's opposite to that. But it's just because it's it's coming, it's going to the lungs to go get oxygen and then it's coming back from the lungs after receiving oxygen. So that's why it's gonna be opposite, okay? So we've got those major blood vessels there. And then at the end of this whole thing, we're about to have our aorta, which is going to supply blood to the rest of our body, okay? So he comes up out the top of the heart, like so. He's going to go back behind me, so. Like so. And he's actually going to come out kind of the bottom side of the heart here. And this guy is called the aorta. Okay. So he's our, oops, he kind of hit. Let's see if I can find it. Um, but he's going to be um, our major blood vessel that's going to be pumping blood out to the rest of the body. Okay, so we've got our chambers labeled and we have our blood vessels labeled. Um, we also need to label um, our valves that are going to be involved with this also. And so you definitely need to um, know the valve names because when we go through blood flow, you're going to see it going through the various valves. When we get into our cardiac disorders and we see all the different um, Disorders, we're going to have valve problems, so we're going to need to know um, the differences of all those as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and name the valves, and I'll label those in green too. Okay, so on this side, um, we're going to have a three-peaked mountain. It's very hard to say, three-peaked mountain. Okay, and over here, we're going to have a two-peaked mountain. Um, so sometimes names in anatomy make sense and sometimes names don't make sense. So it just kind of depends. So, um, with this, we are going to be a tricuspid valve, okay? Because it's got the three points on it, so it's tricuspid, makes sense. Okay, this guy, you've already figured out, yes, it's bicuspid because it makes sense. Now, unfortunately, with this guy, you will hear him referred to as two different names. He can be known as the bicuspid valve, but he is also known as a mitral valve, which is kind of handy because his little valve looks like an M already. So mitral valve, bicuspid, makes sense. Now, I went through school learning that it was mitral over bicuspid, but like I said, it really doesn't matter. I'll refer to it as both. So it's just kind of knowing that that's the same valve that I'm talking about, okay? Easy to way to remember this because it's hard to remember that it's three then two versus two and three. Just in your mind, you wanna put it two and three, but it's three and two. Um, easy uh, saying that I learned in order to get this correct was that you try something before you buy something. So it's tricuspid before the bicuspid. Just, you know, works with me. I don't know if it'll work for you guys, but sorry. Okay. Um, we have two other valves that we need to label. So we've got a valve here, and we've got a valve here. Okay. So 
So these are known as our AV valves because they separate the atrium from the ventricles. So AV valve. Okay. These guys get a different name. They're not shaped the same way. Um, and these are known as semilunar valves. I'll just write the word down here for you. Semilunar valves. Um, so if you hear the difference between AV valves versus semilunar valves, that's what it's talking about. Okay. So this um, valve here is we're about to go to the lungs, so we call this the pulmonary valve. Okay, this guy is about to go to the aorta, so we call him the aortic valve. Again, sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't, but it's kind of funny. And I'm trying to think, is there anything else? We've got the chambers labeled, we've got the valves labeled, and we've got the major blood vessels labeled. And I believe that is it for labeling. And in the next video, I'll talk about the layers of the heart, and then I'll talk about um, where the heart is actually located within the chest, because a lot of people get that confused as far as where is it, where it's at. And there is a special name for it, so we'll talk about that. And then um, there'll be another video, <laughs> lots of videos. There'll be another video um, about the blood flow, and then there'll be another one about how the heart conduction works. Take a look at those.